Mathematics Lesson 26 Topic Financial Mathematics 1 Turn to Lesson 26 in the Learner's Workbook. This lesson includes an individual activity with summative assessment. Integration This lesson integrates with maths literacy, life orientation and general banking knowledge. Prior knowledge this lesson builds on what you learned in Grade 9 Mathematics when we covered Financial Mathematics. Lesson Overview In this lesson you will Learn about simple interest Come to understand more about higher purchase Hi Grade 10s, welcome to the Learning Channel we are going to be doing probably the most exciting topic of the whole of mathematics and that is financial mathematics. But my name is Mark Phillips and this is my co-presenter Nelson. Hi everyone, it's Nelson here. As Mark has already explained, we're here for financial maths. It's a very interesting topic. I absolutely, absolutely. We're really going to have a lot of fun with this thing. You're going to learn about the magic of money. By the time you get to grade 12, it's going to be so exciting that you're going to leave school. They're going to leave school with skills that are going to make you rich one day, unlike Good, we yeah. teachers. Hey? So let's look at the outcome that we're dealing with. Okay, learning outcome one, number and number relationships. The assessment standard, we're going to use simple and compound formula. And then in the second lesson, we're going to look at exchange rates. Okay, the lesson overview. Well, we're going to look at simple interest today, higher purchase, Okay, now, guys, before we start, um, I want to just comment on a thing called higher purchase. You know, if you go to one of the stores and you go and buy a DVD player, you probably furniture. know your yeah, furniture. What do people do? They take out higher purchase loans. And, and both Nelson and I know that that's probably one of the worst things to do because you pay all that interest. Yeah. Yeah. So we're going to learn in this lesson about simple interest and how it connects to higher purchase. higher purchase. So here we go. Do you want to handle the first example? Yeah. Right. Let's look at the simple interest. Consider an amount of a thousand invested at 10% per annum, symbol interest. Right. Here, you realize that when we talk of symbol interest per annum, the amount is fixed. The interest is fixed. Even if it's for five years. Yeah. Year one, it's the same amount year two year three year four year five you're getting the same amount yeah. right now let's look at the sum and see what it needs right we've got a thousand which is the original amount at 10 percent we call this interest rate per annum symbol interest right now Accumulated amount after one year, as I've explained here, is 10% of a thousand plus a thousand. Then you realize that, okay, we have got a thousand, this is the initial amount. Then you get plus 10% of a, of a thousand. Just something, um, Nelson, if we can just um, remind the students something. Um, before you go on, and probably before you continue, just something that you need to know. Notice 10% is actually 10 divided by 100, 100 yeah. which of course gives you the decimal noughts comma one, one zero. zero. In financial maths, it is very, very important to always take the interest rate, which is 10%, 24%, whatever, and divide it by 100 to give you a decimal. In finance, we're always going to work with a decimal. So let's go back to the example, and Nelson, yeah. let's see what happens. This is why we're having 0 0.10 0 here. Then look at this. 0 0.10 this is that 10 percent because 10 percent it's 10 over 100 now now this one it's in decimal form 0 0.10 times a thousand now we get in the accumulated amount of 1100 because we add in the interest that simple interest right then the interest received it's 100 rand how do you explain this mark okay now guess what happened you started with a thousand rand okay you did nothing with the money. 
I like that kind of thing. You just put it in the bank. You didn't put it under your bed. You put the money in the bank, and what happened is that they paid you 10% interest. And the best part is your money grew to 1,100. I like that. With no work, you see it's 10% interest. Now let's see what happens in the second year. Right. The interest received is 100. Now, accumulated amount after three years, it's 1,200 plus 10% of 1,000, then we get 1,300. Now, the interest received is 100 rand. As this is its simple interest, I mean, the amount must be fixed. What's important to mention here, guys, is that you started with 1,000, okay, 10% grew to the 1,100. But now notice that in the second year, the interest is worked out on the original, original amount. amount. Yeah, the original amount. You're gonna see in the next lesson where compound interest is actually a lot better. But did you notice for simple, it's always the original amount. And of course, the interest grew again by 100 Rand, the same as the first year. Right, now, accumulated amount after four years. Now let's see how it goes, Mark. Okay, 1,300 plus 10% of 1,000 gives you 1,4. Again, your interest received is 100 Rand. And if we pop into the fifth year, let's see what happens after five years. Again, notice the amount from the fourth year goes into the fifth year, yes. and it's 10%. And Nelson would probably agree with me, it's always the original. Again, yep. 1,500, and the interest received is 100 Rand. Problem is, guys, I don't know about you, but if we have to keep doing this over and over, especially with compound interest, it's going to be a major yeah. problem. We get all these little calculations. Yeah. We need a formula. Now, here comes the best part. You probably remember this from grade right nine. If not, there is a beautiful little formula to calculate simple interest. Let's have a look. The formula which helps us to calculate this future value or accumulated amount, if an original amount is invested or loaned for n years, at a rate of R% percent simple interest per annum is given by, look at that formula. Now Nelson, you tell us what those symbols mean. Right, let's look at A, then A is the future amount, then P, P is the original amount, and I, as we have explained this initially, it's R over 100. And remember, I is the interest, guys. Very important. And we always have it as a decimal. Good. And then N, it's number of years. Now, what we're going to do is Nelson's just highlighted those things. Remember, the P is the original amount, the 1,000 Rand. The accumulated amount is the 1,500 Rand, yeah. the money you made because of interest. The interest, 10%, divide by 100. 0, 1, 0, yeah. and n is the time period. Now watch, if we substitute these values into the formula, no, the most amazing thing happens. We're not happens. going step by step, yeah. we're using the formula now. Let's have a look. Consider the previous example. The accumulated amount after five years can be calculated by using this formula. Right, yeah. we've got a is p into one plus a n, as we've explained. Now we make substitution. p, which is the original amount, is a thousand into one plus 0 0.10, it's our interest rate. It comes as decimal as we explained already, times five, where five is the number of years. Now amount comes out Look at 1,500. That. Look at that, isn't that amazing? Just a few lines rather than all those all calculations. Steps, five steps. Yeah. Now we made this yeah. in three steps. I'm the, I really love this financial math has got to be the best. If we look at another example, people, then we're going to do now three examples quickly to, to show you how the mathematics works behind this. Yeah.